Gretsch guitars are among the most iconic guitars in the world and they have been in the hands of some of the greatest musicians in history. If you haven't watched our Understanding Gretsch video yet, then go ahead and get yourself refreshed with what they have to offer and learn the difference between your Jets and your Electromatics and your Streamliner Penguin Falcons and then realise how much gibberish I just said. Today, however, we're going to be going into a bit more detail about the sound of Gretsch. For how amazing Gretsch guitars are, they've always been a little bit pigeonholed into certain genres. But the thing about Gretsch guitars is they can pretty much play anything. Yes, they are known for being in certain genres such as rockabilly and country and perhaps even jazz. However, Gretsch guitars have been at the forefront of pretty much every movement or genre that's appeared in the 21st century. Well, every guitar genre. I mean, there's not been that many in EDM, for example. So today, let's take you on a journey through the history of Gretsch via the lens of some of their most iconic players and the styles in which they played. So Gretsch as a company started all the way back in the 1800s, but back then they pretty much only did drums. And let's face it, none of us really care about drums. So let's fast forward to the good bit. In 1954, Gretsch collaborated with a guitarist by the name of Chet Atkins to produce their first ever electric guitar. And that is when they created their iconic 6120 hollow body guitar. You've definitely seen it before, especially if you've been poking your nose around Gretsch guitars already, or if you've already seen our Understanding Gretsch video, the link for which is in the description. Nevertheless, the Gretsch guitar helped to define Chet Atkins' sound, and similarly, Chet Atkins had a major influence on the early sound of the Gretsch. There's even rumours going around that they invented the first ever humbucking pickup. Chet Atkins went to go see a man called Ray Butts to try and find a solution to the noise and feedback that he was getting from the pickups in his guitar, and he produced a double wound pickup that produced a lot less noise and was a bit warmer and thicker. It's a claim they eventually lost to Gibson in 1957 because Gibson were the first to file the patent for the humbucking pickup. Nevertheless, the relationship between Gretsch and Chet Atkins helped define the early years of Gretsch guitars. But what is Chet Atkins style? Well, he's a combination of a few different genres, spanning from country Merle Travis style picking, getting into classic jazz, and even a little bit of rockabilly, all played on his Gretsch 6120. <laughs> Thank you. 
He paved the way for Gretsch guitars to shine throughout the rest of the 20th century. But the styles of music that Chet Atkins is known for aren't exactly unexpected when you think about Gretsch guitars. So let's keep going. The next notable user of Gretsch guitars in the 60s was none other than the Beatles' George Harrison. Harrison was hugely influenced by Chet Atkins, and he played a number of different Gretsch models, including through the 50s and 60s, his Gretsch Duo Jet, which is a solid body offering from Gretsch, albeit with some chambering in the body for a bit of weight relief and to add a bit of a punchier tone. The British invasion pushed the Beatles into the stratosphere, and as a result, result, the popularity of Gretsch guitars soared into the 60s. Musicians from all over the world were flocking to the brand for their signature punchy tone and very classy looks. Guitarists such as Dwayne Eddy and Eddie Cochran helped pushed the sound of Gretsch guitars into a more rock and roll territory. Their punchy tone being absolutely perfect for the rock and roll sounds that they were creating, and this helped pave the way for future generations of rockers to adopt these guitars. As the sound of rock music progressed through the 60s and the 70s, the guitars followed in the hands of the guitarists who paved the way. Pete Townsend from The Who and Brian Jones of The Rolling Stones were notable users of Gretsch guitars in the late 60s and early 70s, and probably one of the most famous all Gretsch guitarists of the rock generation was none other than ACDC's Malcolm Young. For all of the influence that Angus Young had on rock music with his searing lead tones and his uh, <laughs> questionable outfit choices, Malcolm Young's rhythm guitar playing helped pave the way for generations of rock riffers through the years. His punchy rhythm playing was one of the cornerstones of the band's sound and it was all played on Gretsch guitars. <laughs> His most famous guitar of choice, of which Gretsch still do a signature model to today, was his signature double jet where he had the neck pickup taken out because, well, he didn't use it. But he was also known to play guitars such as the Gretsch White Falcon as well. However, the most important thing to note here is that one of the most influential rock bands in history had a sound that was built from the sound of Gretsch guitars. Gretsch's popularity declined into the 80s, partly due to the rise in popularity of high performance brands such as Charvel and Jackson and Ibanez, and largely it was due to the issues that Gretsch were having with the company that they partnered with. 
They found it difficult to adapt to the changing music of the 70s and early 80s, but they also had a lot of factory issues, and as such, production was halted briefly into the 80s. Fred Gretsch, who had initially sold the company to this new venture, bought it back in 1984 and started producing Gretsch guitars once again with some new models announced. These models fared okay, I guess, but Gretsch really found their feet again into the 90s when their guitars were adopted by the grunge scene that was forming in Seattle. <laughs> Musicians such as Chris Cornell of Soundgarden adopted the 1989 Sparkle Jet, and as they changed the face of music with their angsty, sludgy, progressive rock sound, well, in their hands were Gretsch guitars. Gretsch actually recently re-released these guitars, including the Sparkle Jet that Chris Cornell was seen playing in videos like Black Hole Sun. So if you want to hear a little bit more about that, then you can check out the video we did when those guitars were released, the link for which will be in the description. And that just about brings us through to the modern day, because in 2002, Gretsch struck a deal with the Fender Musical Instruments Corporation for them to produce and distribute Gretsch guitars which they still do through to today. So that then is a brief history of Gretsch guitars through the iconic trailblazing artists who employed the services of their guitars. What I hope this video does for anyone who might have pigeonholed Gretsch guitars as just rockabilly or jazz machines is help you to realize just how versatile these guitars really are. As a brand, there really aren't many other guitars that span such wide ranges of genres being used by so many different artists. I suppose you have Fender themselves and maybe Gibson, but other than that, Gretsch are probably one of the most versatile guitar brands on the planet. Other than the big two, who else has had a bigger influence on music than Gretsch? But this video is about the many sounds of Gretsch. So at the end, let's go through some of the artists who have been employing the services of Gretsch guitars for years, some of which you might expect, Others might be a bit of a surprise. Okay, so firstly, we have Bono of U2, who is listed on Gretsch's official page as a Gretsch artist. This is a bit of a surprise to me, mainly because I didn't even realize that Bono played guitar, but I guess we can kind of tick off stadium pop and rock as a genre for which Gretsch has been used. Yes, okay, the Edge might use a Strat, but sonically, Gretsch are definitely there in the mix. Next, we have Tom Peterson of Cheap Trick fame, who, if you don't know, are a quite famous rock band from the 70s and 80s who had hits such as I Want You To Want Me and Surrender. Whilst I know we've already covered rock as a genre, Cheap Trick's sound is a little bit kind of punky, a quite a bit alternative to your standard ACDC type rock, so it's another tick in a box for our purpose of versatility. Definitely a lot more of a certain tick in the box for punk is Patrick Stump, the lead singer of pop punk outfit Fallout Boy. I don't know about you, but when I think of early to late 2000s pop punk music, I certainly don't think of the same guitars that are being played by Chet Atkins and Eddie Cochran. Nevertheless, Patrick Stump uses these guitars to get his punchy punk tone. You also have Tim Armstrong of Rancid and Billy Zoom of X, both of which have been known to use Gretsch guitars throughout their careers. Albeit mostly solid bodies, but it still counts. To be honest, when you think about Gretsch's punchy, bright tone, it really doesn't surprise me that they've attracted the likes of Patrick Stump and Tim Armstrong. <laughs> But 
across all genres of music from heavy rock and punk all the way through to jazz and country, there are hundreds of artists using Gretsch, including Brian Setzer, Bo Diddley, ZZ Top, Block Party, Mud Honey, Band of Horses, Social Distortion, Twin Atlantic, Nothing But Thieves, God they are so good, Richard Hawley, Ellie Goldings, guitarist, Two Door Cinema Club and Ninit Tayeb. No, I have no idea who they are, but they play Gretsch guitars and they sound versatile enough to be on this list. So yeah, I mean, the best way I could probably put it is that you're not likely to find all those guitarists on the same playlist. And they all use the same brand of historic, iconic, eye-catching, gorgeous, punchy sounding guitars that are Gretsch. Why? because they've been trusted by guitarists all through the 20th and 21st century to produce their trailblazing sounds that change the face of music. Their brand is accessible to every level of guitarist, going from like 200 pounds all the way up to five grand and above. And when we talk about versatile guitar brands like Fender, why not Gretsch? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's helped you to realize just how versatile and flexible these guitars really are. Everything we played in this video for you is new for 2022 and as I sit here and record this, it's all currently in stock. So if one of these guitars caught your eye, then check them out in the description and see if you can't start your own musical journey with Gretsch. What do you guys think though? Who is the weirdest player you've ever seen playing a Gretsch? Not because they play weird music, but because it's very weird to see them with a Gretsch guitar. Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Nathan for coming in and demonstrating the incredible versatility of these guitars. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to see more things like this, and we will see you very soon.